Okay, so in this tutorial, what you're going to learn how to do is a corrugated metal roof sheet as shown here, which is pretty customizable, as you'll see in a few uh, minutes. So you can pretty much give it the shape you want. and even use the live boolean to create some sort of damage. So let me just unhide all this and I'll walk you through it. You're going to want to start with a plane. Activate the grid. And I'm going to want to place a um, edge loop and scroll on my mouse wheel to get it evenly spaced. You can see all of the keys I am clicking on my keyboard as well as on my mouse in this area. And sorry, I forgot to deactivate the proportional editing, which I will explain later on. Now that we have our basic shape, I'm going to apply a array modifier. by making sure that I uh, tick merge so that if I did not have merge ticked, oops, sorry, and applied it, the vertices between this array would not be merged here as they would on this one, which has merged. As you can see, the difference. So I'll add a second array modifier, which I will change the axes in which it's doing the array. These three here being the axes, and this one, the amount of times the array repeats. Let's get a bit of geometry to work with. All right, that seems about okay for me. So, just giving myself a bit more space. I'm going to collapse these two array modifiers, and I'm then going to come here and apply, uh, not apply, add a subdivision surface modifier. Okay, as you can see, I forgot to tick merge on this one, and that's the reason why it's giving me these weird edges. I'm going to add a few subdivisions to this. And what this is basically doing is giving me more faces and vertices to play with. So I'm going to come here and add also a displacement modifier, which you'll see the usefulness in just a few seconds. So I'm going to um, click on new to add a new texture. And then I'm going to click on this icon here which is basically just a shortcut which switches from this, from this, sorry, to this. We're going to go here in type, select the cloud. As you can see, the displacement modifier is affecting the mesh. It's not pretty. It's not what we're aiming for. So I'm going to come scale this up.
You can play here with the different contrast, saturation, brightness values. You can also use the color ramp if you like a bit more control. You can see here. But I'll leave that for now. I'm going to come here on the, the displacement and turn it down a little. So it's more like something we're looking for. I'm also going to go into the subdivisions and put it to simple. I am then going to create a lattice. So it is important to scale this lattice in object mode and not in edit mode. Otherwise it causes a whole load of problems. So now that I have scaled the lattice so that it matches the shape a bit better. Oh, actually it should scale it a bit here. I'm going to press the mesh, then select the lattice and hit Control P and add a lattice to former. which basically just adds into modifiers uh, lattice deformer, which is a quicker way of doing it. So I'm going to click the lattice, come here under the lattice properties, and add a few subdivisions to this lattice. All right, now that I have the lattice with a reasonable amount of subdivisions in order to control it, I'm going to come into edit mode. And I am going to come move these points around as I please. And I can come down here and press the Proportional editing, which allows me to move more, uh, several control points of the lattice with more or less influence depending on the size of the circle. I am modifying the size of the circle by scrolling up and down on my mouse. So, just going to change this a bit. Okay, that should be fine for now. So optionally from here, what I could do is come and add an object that I will use as a Boolean. First going to select the object, then the mesh, which I want a Boolean, and hit Control minus. Okay, for some reason, it makes the second array drop all the way down the modifier stack. So I'm just going to bring that back up and it's going to get rid of all these weird problems we have here. All right. So as you can see, it is live booty and it's a mesh. I can even come into edit mode. Click C to go into Paint Select to select several vertices at the same time. With the proportional editing enabled, I can come and move these this Boolean object vertices. 
This can be useful if you wanted to create a damaged version of the mesh, as shown in the beginning of the video. But for now, and for simplicity's sake, I'm just going to delete that and come onto the mesh and delete that Boolean modifier I had added. So let's say that I am happy with the shape I have right now. I am going to hide the lattice and I am going to come and apply from the top to the bottom all the modifiers in the stack. It is important to apply them one after the other, otherwise you risk ending up with some very weird errors. I could come here and change the amount of displacement that is applied if I wanted it. But let's leave that at, let's say, four. That seems nice to me. Okay, and here I'm going to apply the lattice modifier, which means that I can no longer use the lattice to modify this mesh. As you can see, it has no impact. I'm going to come down here and disable the proportional editing. And I am going to delete this lattice. So let's say that you wanted to import this into a game engine. What I would do would be to come here in the modifier and come down here to the decimate modifier. Click on the unsubdivide. As you can see, this is our current face count, which is a bit much for this object in the game engine. Now I'm going to come bring that down to something reasonable. Okay, so. <laughs> This seems about reasonable, it's maybe on a bit much, but let's just keep it like this for now. So I'll apply that decimate modifier. And basically what it has done is reduced the poly count. As you can see here, if I control Z this, this was the original poly count. And this is our new poly count. So here, as we can see, the shading is wrong. So I'm going to come and press W and select Shade Smooth, which leaves us with a mesh that would be pretty much ready to be imported into a game engine. All you would need to do is come up here at File, Export and export as FBX.